What's up guys? Welcome back to the Poker Vlog. This is episode number 55. I'm up here in Northern California, my parents' place. Been up here for the last seven days or so. Came out to celebrate my 30th with the family. So we all we all had a nice dinner recently. And uh, I'm also out here because my best friend's wife just started a new fashion line. It's called Hide the Label. So she had an opening fashion show launch, I guess. Uh, it was really cool. She's got a lot of awesome stuff. I'll have a link down below in the description box if you want to check that out and maybe pick up something nice for your girlfriend or your wife. Uh, the designer Lauren, she's helping me out with a poker hoodie too and I'm super excited about it. We spent a ton of time and effort and thought uh, just trying to make the best hoodie we can possibly make and my brother's been helping out a lot also. So uh, be on the lookout for that. That'll come out in maybe a few weeks. For this episode, I play a session at 23510 at the Bay 101 in San Jose. Uh, the session took place a few weeks ago. I was in the city for my buddy's 30th, and one of the YouTube viewers, Josh, was cool enough to meet up with me and bring me out there. So I get into some pretty crazy situations. Poker out here is way, way different than it is in Vegas. I think you guys are going to enjoy this episode. Let's go ahead and get into it. Josh and I arrive at the brand new location for the Bay 101. He takes a seat in the 2-3-5 game. I sit down in the 2K cap game. It's two on the button, then three, five, and a $10 mandatory straddle under the gun. Early on, we get pocket sevens in the cutoff and open to 30. The button calls for 28 more. The rest of the players fold. The flop comes, jack seven, deuce, rainbow. We make middle set, pretty good flop. I bet 40. The button doesn't make the call. He folds and we take it down. Next we have king-queen offsuit in the big blind, the hijack opens to 35, the small blind calls, I have a hand that I don't like calling without a position, I don't really like folding it either, it seems like a good opportunity to put on the squeeze play since the hijack has been opening a fairly wide range and we have key blockers to ace-king, ace-queen, pocket kings, and pocket queens so if we 3-bet it's a lot less likely we'll get called or 4-bet. I make it 155, this gets the job done, both players let their hands go. We win one uncontested. Now we have ace-10 of hearts in the cutoff. The hijack opens to 30. I call. The straddler calls. The flop comes. King-queen-jack-rainbow. We flop the nuts. Checks to me. I bet 45. The big blind folds. The hijack calls, so we're heads up. And the turn is a blank. It's a seven of diamonds. The opponent checks. I put out a bet of 120. The player folds and we win it. We've made two big hands so far, but unfortunately haven't gotten paid on either one. Here we're in the small blind with 6-4 of spades. The hijack opens to 20. This is a min raise, and I'm not too proud of this hand, to be honest. The cutoff and the button both call. I'm confused. I accidentally misclick and make it 40. I'm sure people were wondering what the hell's going on with the min raise out of the small blind. The hijack cutoff and button all call. The four of us see the flop. It comes queen 10 6 rainbow. I check. Someone bets 60. I fold. I think I played that hand great. In this hand, we're dealt ace 7 of diamonds on the button. The hijack limps in for 10. I call. The small blind calls. The straddler checks. The flop comes king 7 6 rainbow. We have middle pair and a backdoor flush draw. Small blind leads out for 30. The straddler folds and the hijack calls. I call to see what develops on the turn. We've got quite a few cards that can help us out. The dealer puts out the six of diamonds, checks to me, great card. We pick up the flush draw. I bet 90 and the opponents fold. It's our turn to straddle. We look down at ace deuce of diamonds. The button raises to 35. It seems like a tight player. The small blind makes the call. Three betting or folding are probably the two best options in my opinion and you don't necessarily want to 3-bet a tight player, so I'm totally fine with folding in this situation. Instead, I flat for 25 more. This is most likely the worst option. The three of us see the flop. It comes 4-3 deuce with two clubs. We all check. 
turn is the seven of diamonds, the small blind checks. I kind of feel like I have the best hand after it checks through on the flop. So I put out about a 50. The button now raises to 150. The small blind folds. I'm really perplexed by this bet. He checks back a wet flop, then a seven peels, and he's raising me. Hard for me to imagine what hand he's representing here. A big part of me wants to put in a re-raise, but I haven't seen this guy get out of line in any other hands, so I fold and let him have this one. That was a strange hand though. A long time goes by after in which I don't win any pots and my stack starts dwindling. Not a whole lot to report the last hour and a half or so. Uh, didn't really get in any big hands, but I called a few bets pre-flop and they either got three bet or I missed the flop and uh, had to fold. So hopefully I can uh, get some good hands, get unstuck, maybe book a win. Here I'm the under the gun straddler and I pick up pocket fours. The cutoff opens at 35, folds to me. I make the call, we're heads up. Comes ace eight four, all clubs. I make the second set of the day. I check, the cutoff bets 40. Seems like a reasonable bet. I call, the turn is the three of spades, good card. I take an interesting line and lead out for 80. I'm concerned that if I check, the opponent will check back with a lot of hands containing one club that'll have equity or he might check back with one pair of hands that I'm beating and would like to get value out of. The opponent calls the 80. We see the river, it's the 10 of clubs. Terrible card, I check, the cutoff checks back. I'm thinking a set still might be good, but that's not the case. The other player turns over a six with the six of clubs. He flopped top pair with the six high flush draw, then gets there on the river. I'm stuck about 400 at this point. I pick up ace queen offsuit on the button a double straddle, so it's 20 to limp in. A middle position player calls. I raise to 100. Folds to the end of the gun, plus one double straddler. He calls. The middle position limber calls as well. We go three ways to the flop. It comes king 10 10 with two spades, so we've got an over and a gut shot straight draw to go along with it. Both players check. I consider checking, but it's a good flop for my range as a pre flop raiser. Shouldn't have connected too well with the middle position player who limp called. I expect him to have a lot of small to medium pocket pairs. I'm somewhat concerned about the under the gun plus one player, but he plays loose and might have defended from the double straddle with plenty of hands that wouldn't have connected at all with this board. I bet 120. It's an amount that should fold out all smaller pairs. If I get called, I could still have plenty of outs. This ends up not working out. I can't even get past one opponent. Under the gun plus one calls. The limper then raises to 420. Once again, I'm facing a raise that makes absolutely no sense to me. I suppose he could have limp called pre-flop with some hands that contain a 10, but that's all he's representing here. He doesn't seem to be worried at all that I could have a hand like ace-king or pocket-kings. My hand isn't good enough to call, especially since there's another player involved who called my bet. I fold. The other opponent calls. I stop recording, but their head's up now. The turn is a six of spades. Under the gun, plus one checks. The middle position player fires again for around 900. Under the gun plus one folds. Then the middle position player shows jack deuce of hearts. So he has absolutely nothing. He limp called 100 pre-flop, check raised the flop, then bomb turn and took it down. He might be the best player of all time. I add on some money. I feel like I'm stuck in a washing machine. I can't seem to win a hand. People are making all kinds of weird plays against me and I have absolutely no feel for the table at all. Not really sure what's going on here. We're a few hours into the session. I'm stuck, 600. Lock in for JK. Started out doing well, but uh, just gone cold the last two hours or so. Can't really seem to win a hand. TA, uh, one, two, three, five, TA. Just got bluffed by a Jack Deuce of Hearts. Game like seems pretty good. Just gonna try and go back out there, stay focused, and not tilt off a bunch of money. Shortly after talking to the camera, I look down at ace 10 of diamonds in middle position. I raise to 35. Cutoff calls, the button, three bets to 135. Seems like a good player. He could be putting on a squeeze play here. Looks like a good time to do it. Probably better for me to four bet or fold. We're deep enough where calling isn't too bad of a mistake, I suppose, but we'd be playing out of position in a spot where we might be dominated. I ultimately make the call, tossing in 100 more, thinking that I could be ahead and the player in the cutoff will probably call if I call, so I'm essentially getting around three to one. The cutoff does call, we go three ways to the flop. It's king eight five with two diamonds. We've got the nut flush draw and an over to go with it. I'm first to act and I check. Cutoff also checks. 
The button fires 135 again. It's a small bet, I'm certainly not folding. I don't hate raising, but I don't see the need to raise since I'm getting such a good price to call. I put 135 out there, and now the cutoff raises to 520. The button folds, it's back on me. This raise from the cutoff is a little strange since there aren't any two pair combinations that make sense. You can never have a hand like Kings or Ace King since he just fly out of my raise preflop, so he's basically saying that he has exactly pocket eights or pocket fives. He can also have a number of combo draws. I don't like the idea of folding. I don't like calling for nearly 400 more and playing a monster pot out of position either. I'm tired of all these players raising in weird spots. I decide to get in on the action myself. I want to see what's behind door number three. I'm all in. I don't get snapped off. The opponent takes a few seconds before ultimately making the call, so I'm happy about that. He then asks if I want to run it once or twice. I never bring up running it twice, and ordinarily I'll let the opponent decide. Since he brought it up, I assume that's what he wants to do. I'm in what seems to be a great game with a lot of action. I only brought 4K with me, and I'm in for 2600 already. So if I lose this hand, I'll have to rebuy for significantly less than the max or borrow some money. With all this in mind, I choose to run it twice. Twice is good. The opponent turns over five board diamonds. He's got a pair and a flush draw, basically a coin flip for a pot that's over 4K. I flip over my cards, then position the camera so that we can see the run out. Dealer calls the floor over for permission to run it twice. Run twice. She sees me filming and. Did you what are you doing with your phone yeah, I was videoing. Yeah, I can't video. Cannot. That's when we get shut down. I have to stop filming and put away my phone at the most exciting point, which sucks. Floor comes over, sees that I'm videoing, hey, tells me not on. to video. OP, OP. So I have to turn it off. Uma, four, eight, Uma, the, first, the first board runs out. OP, King on the turn. Back. And then uh, you'll eight on the river. So I win with two pair, kings and eights, and an ace. Uh, the other player had five, four diamonds or five, six of diamonds. So he had a pair and a flush draw. So I uh, got super, super lucky to win that. Plus, I still have all the diamonds left in the deck. Uh, the next run out is a three, and then the river is the nine of diamonds. So I make a flush on the second run out. I win both of them. Scoop about a 4K pot there. Big turnaround. I'm in for 2,600, and now I'm up. I don't know, uh, maybe 1,700. I think I have like 4,400 in front of me because I won a pot after that too. So the day's going really well. Uh, probably gonna cash out in a little bit. Um, and then grab a drink Mondo with uh, Josh who drove me here and there's a few other people too Mondo who, uh, who watched the vlog so catch up with them. I actually played for a little while longer and won a few more medium sized pots before calling it a night. I rack up almost 4600 and book nearly a 2k winning session. Then I head to the bar and hang out with Josh who also won. Cheers, man. Cheers. Thanks for uh, driving me out here. Of course, man. No worries. Anytime. And then he ends up knocking pocket queens face up. Wow. And then the guy swings. Yeah, and then the guy under the gun actually said he had pocket queens as well. So okay. they were having the same thing. Nice, nice, crying. Man. Potentially dead, but I thought Sweet. I still could have missed. So well, I got it's like, a good day, man. We both won. That's awesome. That's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section, and I'll definitely get back to you. Uh, I want to give a big thanks to Josh for picking me up, taking me out to the Bay 101, and making this whole episode happen. Uh, really cool guy, and I uh, really appreciate it. A few people have been asking me lately to kind of talk about my story in poker. Um, Upswing just did an interview with me and uh, wrote up an article. I'll have a link down below in the description box for that if you want to check it out. Kind of go over how I started playing poker. Um, I talk about uh, a time when I went broke in poker. Um, I give some other advice and uh, kind of talk about where I'm at now. So uh, I think Upswing is an awesome company and they put out some really good training material also. I'll have a link down below in the description box for the uh, 
the training stuff too. Hope you guys are all doing well. Good luck at the tables and I'll see you next time.